here's here's the. Uh, do you remember the book, the memory book that Chris made for you? Yeah. I'm just looking at them. Hey, your two daughters. Not beautiful. It all happened on um, October fourth. It's kind of hard to talk about, but um, um, I woke up and Bill was unresponsive I had to call 911 and an ambulance came and got him and took him to Stevenson Memorial Hospital where he had a CT scan and they determined he had a, um, a brain aneurysm so we had to get rush him to St. Mike's um, Bill spent two months in ICU at St. Mike's Hospital once he was out of ICU and you know was doing much better he uh, was repatriated to Stevenson Memorial Hospital this video is when I first told you you had a brain aneurysm. How did your brain aneurysm happen? I don't remember. You can't remember. Coming back to Alliston was uh, was amazing. It was much more easy for Bill to have his family at his side. The care that he had in Stevenson, it felt like home, and it didn't feel like I was going to a hospital. And everybody knew us. Um, but at that point, everybody knew our names. I just felt so good when I got there um, because we were in such a bad situation already. Feeling really good? As safe as possible. That's right, looking after you, making sure you're safe as possible. While we were there, we had to spend some holidays there. Bill's birthday, he turned 74 in the hospital. Happy birthday to you! Yay! So it was quite uh, a trying time to have, we're such a, a close-knit family. Sorry. <laughs> and not to have Bill with us. It was nice to just be 15 minutes away. So when Bill returned, the first week of December was based on um, his assessments medically, just to see where he was at, what goals he had, what deficits he had. Uh, once medically we saw that he was in good shape, physio began. And from the get-go, he started knocking down barriers. Two, three. Grab onto that black handle, Bill. Good. And the other hand. So the nurses made these little signs, and they pasted them all around. Right? And that helped with memory. It helped with reading, like, speech, everything. Because I had, had no memory. I had no idea of where, where I was. They were so good. They made sure that I got back to my floor. My name got bigger every day on a different door. <laughs> And the idea was for him to gain a little bit of independence, right? And so without being prompted, he could go out and he could kind of follow these as to where he wants to go. My balance wasn't 100%. My legs weren't that strong. Uh, so I was a little scared, but the ladies there were, were awesome. They hung on to me. They made sure that I was safe and it made me feel a lot better. And the, the more they took me for the walk, the better I was feeling. After he finished, he sat down in the wheelchair and we just, we were so proud of him. I think we all had goosebumps that day. Woohoo! Nice going! <laughs> and we asked Bill, you know, how do you feel? And it was the very first time I heard him say something to me and he just said thank you with tears in his eyes and I think that's why we do the job. It's oh, right for there. Sure, yeah. There was a wedding, his, his granddaughter was getting married in June. For someone who came home in, you know, basically a wheelchair, couldn't walk, I mean, that was March, that was a big stretch. But that was one of the goals that the physiotherapy team had at Stevenson, is that we have to get Bill up and walking, and he did it, he did it. He walked his daughter down the aisle for his granddaughter's wedding, and it was amazing. Bill and his family all became part of our Stevenson family here at the mm -hmm. hospital working with them every day and working so closely and actually Bill now and his family still to the state come back and visit yep. us and that's one of the best things about it is getting to see Bill and see mm -hmm. that big transformation yep. from being completely immobile and not talking, dependent on somebody for every part of his life to now being independent and functioning at such a high level and contributing to his family and to his community. Just a great closure for us to see how tremendous he has done and how much his family loves him. And each time we've gone back, we were greeted quite nicely and laughing and crying like everybody else was in the hallway. 
and I see everybody involved in his, uh, you know, him getting up for first time walking or how comfortable he said he felt with, uh, with the team, um, both nurses, everybody. He felt so comfortable and I just keep saying, yep, it took a village. What many people don't know is that the government doesn't pay for the majority of capital equipment in hospitals. So it's really the role of the foundation to raise those funds through the community, individuals, businesses, and other community groups. And we're so grateful to all of the individuals who support us in the work that we do in helping Stevenson deliver excellence in hospital care. Nice day, grass is starting to turn green. I'm so proud of the work our staff does for our patients here at Stevenson Memorial Hospital. I'm not surprised they were able to help Bill reach his goal of being able to walk again. This is just another example of the miracles that happen every day here at Stevenson. From our growing number of births to mending broken bones, our emergency department welcoming almost 40,000 visits each year, 24-hour x-ray, dialysis, day surgery, and a long list of outpatient specialty clinics. I know what it means to have this hospital in our community, and I thank all the donors from the bottom of my heart. Because of you, we can.